Okay, it's recording. Okay. And then I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, everybody, uh, and welcome to the Marietta Greek Festival informational meeting. Uh, my name is Maria Alberts. Uh, I am chairing this year's festival called Opa to Go Drive Through. Uh, this is intended to give you a run through of the festival drive through logistics and information for all of our volunteers and helpers. We ask that you allow me to run through this presentation in its entirety, and then we will open it up to the floor for questions and answers. And to keep this organized, please use the chat feature to ask your questions, and we will address them at the end. And please keep yourselves muted during the meeting so as to avoid background noise and interference. So let's begin. So as we were discussing what to do with this year's festival, we recognized that we needed to go to the drive. So why a drive-through? As you know, we had to cancel the 2020 festival in April of 2020. At that point, we had already done some cooking. So we sold off the pans of Spanakopita and Kefdetas to our parishioners. And we were able to recoup the expenses for that and made a little money, which was great. And we hope those that purchased those items enjoyed them. We also noted that Atlanta and Cumming had successful drive-throughs in 2020, which encouraged us as well. With the uncertainty of where COVID conditions were going to be by May of 2021, when we started our planning in January, we decided not to take the chance and still have a drive-through. We also wanted to have a fellowship opportunity. We realized that everyone was hungry to see each other again and to come together as a community. And we thought that this would provide that. One thing that's important is we do need to follow all the COVID directives with our drive-through. Um, so anything that has been set forth by the archdiocese, the CDC, the Georgia government offices, we will adhere to. Okay, so what you can expect, expect is that uh, it's a drive-through only. So our guests will not be allowed to leave their vehicles and come onto the grounds. We will feature many of our most popular food and pastry items and not everything we normally offer. Also, no booze. And this is where the ambiance comes in. We want to create a Greek cultural experience to the extent possible while, be while being viewed from our guests' vehicles. There will be dance performances, socially distanced, along with cultural signs and displays. In the upper platea, we will have a cafe neon scene with customers, backgammon, and some special dance performances. So here is the proposed menu. This is limited to our best-selling items. Note that we do have a new item that we're going to try out. It's the grilled chicken rice ball. All of the pastries will be prepackaged. We're only offering four, baklava, kulurakia, almond crescents, and curambiadas. Also, all the food items will be packaged very similar to how restaurants package their to-go items. We will also include plastic cutlery with all of the orders. Additionally, we will be selling uh, 9 by 12 pans of frozen spanakopita, which will serve approximately 12 large or 24 small pieces, and bags of keftedes frozen, 50 to a bag, to take home and bake. Instructions will also be included with the spanakopita. So where we're at, right now, we've done all the cooking and baking that we can do. Um, uh, in advance, the keftedes, spanakopita, and dolmades have been completed. Uh, we want to thank you for your overwhelming support. We had a lot of people come out and help us with that. We also have some volunteers that are making the kulurakia and curambiedes. 
um, several women. Some are doing it at home. Um, it's it's been a, a again overwhelming support. The volunteer sign up uh, volunteer sign up has been dismal. We have our sign up genius. It's ready to go. Um, there's very few people that have gone out there to sign up. I know you're all coming. So if you could please go to the Sign Up Genius, it's available on the Marietta Greek Festival website. Just click on the volunteer link. Also, this is a great opportunity for youth to help, especially if they want community service credits. There's plenty of jobs that they can do. And I know a lot of them are not dancing. So marketing, um, we've got flyers available. Um, we had put them in the um, Narthex during Holy Week. So I know a lot of people have already taken that. Um, also some car magnets as, as well. Um, one of the uh, marketing um, ideas we had this year is to send out a postcard, <coughs> excuse me, um, which will offer 10% uh, off on the total order the postcard, as I understand it, will go out to about 50,000 homes in the 10 mile radius. Facebook, we have an event under the Marietta Greek Festival uh, Facebook page. Um, you can share that with your friends. We have several press and social media event releases that are gonna be going on. Um, the most important marketing I believe is word of mouth. Please tell all your friends, invite your friends, share the flyer. We have an electronic version that has been included with every weekend schedule. So I know that you've seen it a couple times. Download, download it, send it, forward it, invite your friends. A new feature this year because of the uh, COVID situation is that we will prepare some videos for the website. Uh, we will have a video church tour presented by our own Father Michael. Um, we'll have cooking demonstrations by Leah Gormanos. Uh, Paulina, uh, Paulina Vastakis will do a, a Greek dance lesson, and if time permits, um, we'll even do one for common Greek phrases. Volunteer information. So our, our hours of operation are Friday 4 to 8, Saturday 11 to 8, and Sunday 11 to 5. As far as shifts, most of them will be about three hours long. But Friday, we will start at 11 o'clock with setup and prep. And then there's two other shifts out of the after that, three to six and five to eight. Saturday, uh, nine to 12 is our setup time. 11 to two is the first shift. Two to five is the second shift. And uh, five to eight is the third shift. Uh, same thing with Sunday. However, we may be staying later on the second shift to do some cleanup and takedown. So volunteers, we want you to check in at the church office 15 mi minutes prior to your shift time start. Um, get your name tag. Um, if you are um, working anywhere around food, we'll also provide you with a Marietta Greek Festival apron. Make sure you're wearing a mask and maintaining social distance, particularly around our, our guests. We wanna make them feel comfortable. As far as volunteer food, um, what we're offering this year is a free gyro or chicken and a pita for each shift that you work. If you decide that you want something else to eat, you may certainly buy that. Um, and sodas and waters will be provided free of charge. Volunteer parking. Uh, there will be some limited parking in the upper and lower levels. Uh, preference will be given to the kitchen staff and setup volunteers, um, along with the festival leadership. Um, also, um, the no volunteer parking will be allowed on site after the festival starts. So let's say if you come to the festival um, and you want to start you know, with the setup and the prep at uh, two o'clock and the, and the spots are already full, you'll need to go to Simpson. Simpson has allowed us to use their parking lot for the entire weekend, even Friday while school is in session, okay? Okay, so job descriptions. Uh, many of these will be familiar, um, pretty much the same as we have for a normal festival. Some of these will be brand new. So um, we have estimated the number of volunteers that are needed per shift. Uh, we got to be honest, we are not quite sure um, if we have the right number or not. So uh, we ask everybody to please be flexible and patient with us. Uh, but this is our best guess as to how many volunteers we need. 
So cashiers, um, same job, iPads are the same. Um, they will input the orders and take credit card and cash payments. Expeditors is a new position. That person is a quality assurance type person that will check every order before it goes out the door. Food assembly line is pretty much the same. <clears throat> the workspace is gonna be a little bit smaller and tighter, uh, but we do have fewer items to put together. Finance room and tech support, pretty much the same. Um, they'll be in the office um, and will be available for uh, troubleshooting and iPad charging. Uh, the next couple uh, pretty much are the same. The grill team, the gyros, kitchen cooks, lamb sandwiches, lamb smoking, um, typically will be the same sort of setup. Um, order delivery and fulfillment. Um, these are the people who will run the, the orders out to the cars. Uh, the fulfillment people are typically the same people that used to take the paper with the order and start gathering all of the food items and putting it on a tray. But instead of putting it on a tray, it'll go into a bag instead. Uh, pastries, a little bit simpler um, because all we're really doing is just stocking inventory. Salads, pretty much the same, souvlaki. Traffic flow ex expediter, this is new. Um, we think we need six people on site. And basically what you're doing is basically moving along traffic to avoid um, log jams in certain areas and certainly to avoid traffic going out to Trickham Road. Volunteer check-in station, um, I talked about that earlier. The welcome team is also new. Um, these will be greeters um, and I'll talk about that in a moment. That's a very important role. It's the first people that our guests will see. General help, um, you know, basically are gonna be what we used to call runners. Anywhere needed, if you're not sure where you wanna work or you're, you know, super flexible and just wanna come in and say, where do you need me? That's where you wanna sign up, okay? So let's talk about the proposed layout. So you'll first notice in blue where the volunteer parking is. So on the upper level, it'll be confined to the area. This is where the tree is. This is where the handicapped parking is. So it'll be this area here where you can park. On the you lower to, level- You need to share your screen, Maria. Is it not shared? No. Okay, thank you. Now it is. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so you'll notice that the volunteer parking is in the upper area to the right of the handicap spots. Lower area is to the right of the amphitheater. So number one is where the greeters are. Number two, is going to be where the first set of order takers are during the slow times. They will move themselves up to number three when it gets busy. Four is where the gyro and lamb tent is. And five in the PLC is the fulfillment area where we do the food prep, we fill the orders and uh, deliver the food. Number six, uh, parking spots. Um, this is reserved for if we have special orders or if there's something wrong with the order and the person has to wait, uh, we will ask them to, point, uh, to park in one of the spots over there and then deliver the order to them. So on uh, the station one, uh, the costumed greeters, they'll be near the pavilion, but they can move based on traffic. The guests will enter into the lower level and they will welcome the guests. They'll hand out menus or offer the QR code, answer any questions. They'll also put a number on the passenger side of the vehicle windshield. Um, and this will be used by the order takers later. Also, they will direct the drivers to the food order takers and the appropriate lanes. And this is a great job for young adults. And station two is the order taking area. Um, during the slow times, we'll have about two to three cashiers. They'll be in front of the office entrance. There'll be two lanes with stanchions. Again, they'll take the order on the iPad. They'll receive payment. 
There will be one cash box. One cashier will manage that cash box and give change. And while taking the order, they will type into the iPad the vehicle number so that when it comes, they go around to the top, uh, we'll know which cards to deliver the order to. The order at the same time will print in the food fulfillment area with the vehicle number. And then we'll also print a receipt and we'll give the guests a receipt. So cashiers will start moving towards station three. They'll have to monitor themselves and figure out when that is. But when it starts to get busy, we want them to move towards the end of the building. There'll be more cashiers, probably four to six, and there'll be up to three lanes with stanchions at that point. There will also be a cashier in the upper level because we anticipate that we're gonna have some walk up. So there'll be a tent in for the PLC. And also some people may say, oh, you know, I forgot the gyro, I wanna order it. So we can do that special order right there. Um, cashiers will be required to wear safety vests. There will also be a tent available for them for shade and for resting. And this is a great job for anyone who's worked as a cashier in previous years because they'll be familiar with the iPads or have had fast food work experience, especially with a Chick-fil-A or one of the better ones. Uh, station four is the lamp smoker in Euro prep tent. Um, it's a great job for everyone, including youth and teenagers. And then the food fulfillment order um, is where we assemble everything. So after the cashier took the order on the iPad, the order prints out in the assembly area. Someone will grab the ticket and assemble the order, put it in a bag. They will staple or tape the order printout onto the bag and place it on the table for the expediters. It'll be checked for accuracy. And then the deliverer will take the bag on trays and deliver it to the car with the order number. Uh, we wanna make sure that the deliverer is not holding the bag so that um, the, again, the guests will feel like they're safe. Very important, the deliverer needs to remove the number from the vehicle because we will be using those numbers again. And again, this is a great job for everyone, including youth and teenagers. Station six, we spoke about is the waiting area. So spots will be numbered. And if there's a problem with an order or if there's delay for whatever reason, um, the deliverer will direct them to one of those spots and bring them their food when it's ready. Um, this is an aerial view of the food assembly area. And I, I apologize that it's not very clear, but um, the PLC hall will be used mostly for storage, some assembly, um, but most of the food will actually be on the ceramic tile area in the lobby area. So uh, the warmers will be located somewhere in this hallway. The kitchen will be delivering the, the hot pans of food to the warmers. Uh, and then as it, it's needed, they will be sent to the chafing dish area here where everything will be assembled. The Euro lamp tent will be somewhere around here. It'll be um, close to the side door. The walk-up tent will be probably to the uh, right side of the PLC doors you're looking out. And the caffeineon scene will be over here as people exit. They'll be able to see that and hopefully be entertained briefly as they exit the property. Um, here's another view of the PLC lobby area. Um, it's not to scale, but um, it kind of gives you a sense of where things are going to be. Um, and this is not cast in stone but we're thinking of actually having a couple of the uh, metal tables here with the chafing dishes. There'll be a fridge for salads. There'll be either a fridge or a cooler for drinks. Um, the iPad order printer will be somewhere here. So when this runner deliverer comes back inside, um, they can start assembling the order again. And we'll have a freezer for the frozen spun copita and kiftedes. So other ways to help. We recognize that not everybody is going to uh, want to be at the festival or can be at the festival that weekend. So we have other ways and several ways, including um, for those who need to sit. So set up and take down, um, always very important. Um, you know, we, we like having people to help us with the logistics of that. Food prep. So the week leading up to the festival, uh, we will be doing pastry packaging on Monday. 
we will start preparing and marinating the souvlaki on Wednesday and Thursday. And we will start prepackaging the salads on Thursday as well. Um, the other thing, and it's not written here, but uh, we may need some help actually picking up uh, some food orders from International Bakery and Sam. So if anybody has a pickup truck and has time during the week to do that, uh, let us know. Uh, we certainly can use the help there. Uh, we need help putting out road signs Friday around noon. Uh, we need help picking up the road signs Sunday after the festival. Um, also, if you are uh, interested in being an actor in the cafe neon scene, that's pretty easy. You're just basically sitting and having coffee, playing backgammon. You can twirl your kumbaloi and uh, watch the dancers. You can also be a costumed actor. So a costumed actor can just stroll the grounds, be kind of part of the scenery. Um, they can also uh, double duty and be a traffic flow expediter. Um, also, if you um, require a lot of sitting, the volunteer check-in might be a good job for you as well. Another way to help um, is to give us a monetary donation. I have had several people who come up to me saying that, you know, they, um, you know, have back problems and they just, you know, don't think that they are able to do work at the festival. Can I give you money instead? Um, yes, you can take your money. Um, we also will... Um, um, it will help offset expenses and help us to hire extra help as we need to to subsidize uh, the number of volunteers. Um, we have different levels. We have friend of the festival, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And also if you are a business and want to offer us a sponsorship, uh, we will offer your business logo and link to your website on our website for sponsorships of 250 or more. Also this Saturday is a festival work day. Um, if you can, uh, as many of you that can come out, even if it's for an hour or two, we need a lot of help bringing out all of the items that we need uh, out of storage uh, for the festival weekend. And also start cleaning it up and setting it up. We have a complete list of everything that needs to happen that day. It's pretty long. Um, we will serve you lunch as well. Um, and uh, hopefully you can join us for Festival Work Day. So all this takes hard work and planning. Um, I wanna thank our leadership team, uh, Lela, Ellen, Mary, Christina. Um, they've taken on their challenges and done it quite well. Um, they are responsible for several areas and uh, hopefully we've done a good job of covering all of our bases. Um, I'm sure some surprise will come up on festival weekend that we didn't anticipate because it happens every year and it's never the same problem. So we'll do our best to troubleshoot and uh, be there to support everyone. So that's my presentation. Um, I wanna thank you for your attention and I wanna go ahead and field any questions that you have. Hey Maria, this is Peter. I had a, I had a quick question. Um, the areas of the church where we're not having cars parked, um, is there any reason we're not going to utilize that and park cars there um, before the festival? Um, one of the reasons we decided not to allow all the, all the uh, parking spots in case we have to flow cars out to some of those areas. So if we need to create another lane, let's say in the back of the multipurpose building, we have extra lanes then. So that's the reason why. I mean, we could okay. certainly modify that as the weekend progresses, but that's the initial plan. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey Maria, it's David Leinbaugh. Hi. Uh, thanks for the presentation. I was just curious, are we gonna put a yard sign out for like this weekend and next week for all the mm -hmm. people to drive up and check them? Great. Yeah, so, so here's part of the problem and you know, we all recognize this, having Easter occur two weeks before the festival has certainly um, created a lot of delays, um, even with the printer. Um, so I, the signs and the banners are going to be ready by Monday and we'll put them out as soon as we get them. Um, however, I think we do have some signage that we could put up immediately, but we are getting some permanent banners as well. Great, thanks. Dennis? Hey Maria. Uh, real quick, the dancers, are they in the amphitheater? Are they on the platea? What, what's the final verdict on that? Uh, Paulina, you're on the, you're on the call. Yes. Can you talk about that? Uh, yes, we're going to split 
uh, the team in half and uh, upstairs will be more of our modern show um, and will fit the cafe neon scene better. And as half of them are up there, the other half will be downstairs doing the same thing because we're using the same equipment. Um, and uh, so kind of both, <laughs> we'll mm -hmm. be dancing in both. But my question was, uh, was I was about to ask was, we tried dancing in the amphitheater and where the cars are gonna be with the big uh, pillars that we have um, surrounding the back of the amphitheater. It's very hard to see. So I think we do have that space in, um, right on the other side of the big columns uh, where we could dance in the parking lot, if that's okay with you all, I wanted to ask that. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really flexible on that. You just do what you think is best, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, I'm a little, a I'm a, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Just real quick related to that. Um, um, Paulina, how yeah. do you anticipate, uh, I know that the, I'm sure that the drive-through isn't going to be packed all every hour, you know, it'll be more <laughs> around the, um, the meal time. So are, are, do you anticipate the dancers having a, a set schedule? Is it going to be just as it starts to get busy? How do you have that figured out? Um, we've done this with smaller festivals because, uh, you know, they also don't know when their peak times are going to be. Uh, we have a, what we call tentative schedule and, you know, we will, you know, be posting that and, um, and it is, will be advertised as tentative. Um, and the dancers know, I think the good thing about is most of, almost all the dancers that are dancing for festival, for this festival have also danced with me for travel group and, they've done this before where I'm like, okay, guys, it's getting busy, let's go, boom, you know, and it's like, you know, we get it together because we have a peak. So they're very flexible. We're going to be flexible and they're prepared to be that way. Um, and then when we hit a low, you know, I say, okay, take time to rest. Um, but again, we will kind of have a, a tentative schedule. Um, like we can always, you know, see that lunch and dinner will both be busy 12 or five o'clock or probably will be busy. So we'll plan definitely to entertain then. Our shows are a lot shorter um, and we're gonna be doing them more often. So mm -hmm. that way we can, you know, when one car passes by, you know, we're looping the same thing uh, and continuously uh, doing like small 10 minute shows like every hour instead of mm -hmm. 20 minute shows every two hours. So that's the plan so far. So <laughs> we're, we're flexible. Okay. First Flexible of all, thanks. The name. <laughs> name of the game. Oh. Good. Bunny, what the? I just wanted to piggyback on what we were just talking about. And thanks again for all the hard work of everybody. Um, I'm a little concerned about our representation on our marketing, like on our Facebook page and our um, uh, website, because like, for instance, ah, I just lost it. Sorry. Oh. Like here, I don't know if you can see that, but that's like a picture of the guys dancing with the fire. That's not gonna happen this year. And then it also says all weekend long, our amphitheater will be filled with dancers, dances from different regions of Greece. Make sure you don't miss it. We don't wanna give people the idea that it's going to be like before. And even on the um, information page, it has a filled amphitheater with dancers pictured and I just don't think that that's a good representation of what people are going to see or maybe we'll stay away if they think it's going to be crowded. Um, that's a great point Peggy and um, if you don't mind um, can you shoot over those comments to us um, sure. include include Lela as well. Um, I know what? that there's still some work Lella Bridgers. Oh, yes. Okay. So in, um, I know that we still have a little bit of work cleaning up the website. Um, we want to be careful. Um, we want to represent the festival accurately. I agree with you this okay. year, but we also want to kind of present a brand of what our festival normally is too. So it's going to be kind of a balancing act of what we include and what we don't. But I, I agree with, you know, the pictures and the crowds. Maybe we take those down this year. I, Maria, if I, if I could chime in a minute, I, I don't really have a problem with it. I think the way we deal with it is, is say, we're giving a taste of the Marietta Greek Festival, because really this is advertising for next year. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I, 
I'm not as worried about having the pictures as long. We can clean up the language, certainly. Mm -hmm. But right. it's, it's giving an, a taste of what it will be like next year. I mean, everybody knows this is COVID conditions. It's not the same as, as usual. So there are some festivals that are going full blown now, though. I mean, um, like the ones like that cities are throwing out and things like that. Um, yeah. But, so agreed. But it's clearly a drive through only festival. From okay. The, yeah. Okay. And Maria, I wanted to ask very quickly, if I can. Mm -hmm. um, if, do you have uh, do you have a small tent for us uh, in dance? You know, right about at the opening of the amphitheater area, so we can place the um, speaker equipment and all of them and keep it protected from the elements. I don't um, know if I mentioned that. I, I don't remember that you mentioned it, but um, yeah. if you could send that request to Ellen Linebaugh. Okay. Speaking of Ellen, I'm right next to her. Uh, <laughs> one, more question. Uh, one more question for me. When the accuracy people do the check, are they opening the boxes and such? Or is it going to be, I mean, are we having, are we having them like kind of potentially contaminate the food or something? OK, great question, because we actually discussed this the other night with the, the leadership team for that. So um, everything in packaging will be sealed already. And um, the one thing they're checking for is, so for instance, we have a lamb platter and a lamb sandwich. So if the fulfillment person put in a lamb sandwich instead of a lamb platter, you know, that's the sort of thing that we're looking for. Or if somebody ordered, you know, a gyro and a chicken and a pita and there's two gyros, you know, we'll substitute it out. So that's, that's the type of thing they're looking for. But how do they know what they're looking at? Because it'll packaging. be labeled. It'll be labeled. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if they forgot, like there'll be tzatziki sauce on the side if they forgot to put the tzatziki in, you know, that sort of thing. Or the cutlery. Christine, was there anything through the chat? I don't see it. No. No, okay. nothing through the chat. Okay, got it. Oh, if I can, one more thing. Okay. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that is uh, registered to be greeters that during the festival work day of 9 to 2 on Saturday, we'll, um, I'll be doing costume fittings uh, 9 to 11 in the morning. So if anybody is signed up to be a costumed greeter, uh, they need to see me then. Otherwise, they, won't, they will not get a costume because mm -hmm. I will lock that closet. Uh, the closet will be locked, locked up. Maria, can you speak to the uh, cultural feel uh, exhibit? Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, it's it's going to be very difficult to display information, um, especially stuff that you have to read. So we're sticking really to very big pictures that will be themed. And there'll be big banners. It'll be on the classroom window side. So remember where station two and station three are? It'll be kind of in that area. So one of them will be about Greek, uh, the 200th anniversary of Greek independence. Um, there will be um, a Greek taverna type scene. Um, looks like it might be from like a Santorini that will also um, have the ability for you to uh, scan a QR code and you can get information about Greece and tourism. Um, there'll be another one about Greek food. Um, so there'll be a picture of Greek food. Um, and then the last one, um, oh gosh, I forgot what the last one was. Oh, the last one was, um, it's cute. It's a picture of the Yasu Yal um, apron. And it, it has a, a description underneath uh, serving the community for 30 years every weekend after Mother's Day. So again, we want to make sure that people get it in their heads that we do the Marietta Greek Festival every year, weekend after Mother's Day, hopefully. <laughs> And then as you turn the corner, some cute things too. It says, thank you for visiting Galeotixi and um, a picture of some of the, really cute pictures of some of the younger dancers waving. It's, it's cute. Um, one thing I had seen at a festival of drive-through that was really a nice touch. I don't know if we have time to do it, but it was a little bag, just a little baggy. And they had a card in it of the church the number of the church, 
the sponsors on the back, just a little card. It was like a postcard. Then they had some ouzo candy in it. Then they had like a little stress ball. I don't know why that was in there, but anyway, <laughs> it was just like, thank you. And it said like something, thank you for coming. But it was nice because it was a card you could take home and there would be the number if you wanted to call the church or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something that's feasible this year, but I don't know. Well, one thing uh, we thought about and we can do is we have plenty of those um, trifold brochures that are given out for the church tour that talks oh, about our yeah. church. So, I mean, we can include that in the bag. I don't know if it has our church uh, information, but you know, certainly anybody can Google our church and you know get the contact right. information. Right. But um, no, it's a great idea. I, I don't know how much we can do in, in a couple of days here, but thank you. Dennis? Maria, uh, getting the pastries from the International Bakery, uh, the last four or five years, I've taken care of that uh, with my pickup <laughs> truck. All I need to know is what I'm getting and when it's going to be ready. And uh, I make several trips a day if need be to uh, get all that brought up from the bakery. They're used to seeing me down there. <laughs> okay, so Mary, can you, can you get with Dennis? Okay. Mary's very happy, by the way. <laughs> I love you, Mary. <laughs> Maria, you have a question. I love you too, Dennis. <laughs> Don't tell your husband. <laughs> Maria, do you want to clarify? There's a question. Why will we put the vehicle tag number? Why will we take that if we're putting a number on the car? Oh, it's just a number. It's a laminated number. It's a card, basically. Like if you think preschool, remember how you had to have a number on your car to pick up your kid? <laughs> it's that kind of a number. So we're putting it on the windshield. Um, if for some reason, you know, they don't want it on their windshields, I'm not sure why they would object, but somebody might. Um, they can place it on the inside of the windshield. It's more um, so that the deliverer person can see, oh, order number 10. Let me take it to, to car, the car that has that card. I think so, that maybe they were um, thinking that we were also getting the tag number. No, the yeah, license the plate? No. Yeah, no, 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 no. Right. Just a number Just on a regular the regular card. Um, we've, uh, we've actually got those coming. I'm going to say they're about the size of an index card. Um, I think they should be um, some kind of bright color. So it'll be easy to see. Any other questions? Okay, Father, is there a way that we can put the presentation on the website for anybody who wants to see it again? We, Maria, I'm sorry. Uh, I know it's scaled down, but still, we probably might want to have some kind of first aid stand available in case somebody gets hurt in whatever way. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I said, uh, I know that it's a scaled down festival, but we still might wanna have like a little first aid station just, you know, with the, the basics in case somebody gets hurt, some one of the workers oh, yeah. or whatever. That, yeah, thank you. Thank you for reminding us. Yeah, we'll need to do that. Um, also, we will have policemen on property. There'll be two at the exit and two at the entrance. Um, I would suggest if we have a, a true emergency uh, that needs like urgent medical attention, we, we ask them to help us get an ambulance or whatever help we need. Would it be feasible to go ahead and uh, set up as a first aid area that counter in the downstairs entry to the church? We'll set up a first aid kit and cold compresses if we need them. Yeah, I would do it upstairs as well where okay. people are likely to cut off their fingers. I we do have a uh, first aid kit in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yep. And ice and... I'll check those out because we needed a first, uh, an ice pack uh, in church on Friday night. And when I went to activate the ice pack, 
it had expired and would and would not chill. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure everything's up to date. Great. Okay. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, curious this year, is there going to be a, um, a refrigerated truck or not? Um, on, you know, on the side of the parking lot for storage, the pastry that gets packaged, is it going to sit in the warm um, coat room or is it going to be refrigerated for a little while? Just curious. So we are not having a refrigerated truck. We will bring on site several of the refrigerators that we had uh, accumulated through the pantry along with the freezers. Um, we also believe that with the current um, refrigerators and freezers that we have in the kitchen and these additional, um, and I think we're renting a couple more, aren't we, Mary? Yes. We're renting That's how we're gonna cover it. Okay. We were not able to get um, a Cisco truck this year. Do you hear me? We weren't able. We weren't able to get a Cisco truck this year. They changed their whatever, and they're they're subleasing from another company, and they could give us a eighty-seven foot truck or something. I mean, oh wow! <laughs> some weird thing. Um, but that being said, also to no. your point about the... No, I, I, I recall that the days of the... Ink oh, she's freezing up. Yeah. Um, Ellen or David, I yep. see a hand. Yes. Oh, no, you got it already. Okay. Where'd she go? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, hey, it's it's uh, uh, this is Terry. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Hey, uh, good. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks for putting this together, Maria. I had a question on the on the cleanup day, the mm -hmm. Saturday. I don't remember seeing that on Sign Up Genius. Is there has that been publicized so that, or, or do you have enough volunteers? Do you think already, or just um, so you get enough people out there? You know, kind of out. Uh, helping to set up and such. Um, I there did are not. Volunteers. I'm sorry? There are never enough volunteers. No, there's never <laughs> enough, you're right. <laughs> but um, I could put it out there as part of the um, a sign up genius slot. Um, I know or, that- or, or have Ann maybe send something out since it's so, you know, it's only a few days away. It mm -hmm. may be a good idea just to get the word out more quickly that way so that people would know and you mm -hmm. don't end up with, you know, three people showing up on Saturday. Yeah. Are you talking about this Saturday's work day? Yeah, the work day. Oh, yeah, yes. no, no, we're yeah, definitely yeah. sending out something tomorrow for sure. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're putting together a list of, you know, what needs to be done. So, you know, certain people might want to do this versus that, you know, and we'll, we'll check off as many items as we possibly can. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That was it. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Um, one thing I do want to say is um, to the extent possible, I mean, you're, you're noticing we're not going to have an extra, you know, those extra dumpsters, the refrigerator truck, tents. I mean, we're really trying to uh, minimize our expenses. And a lot of that is a function of we have no idea how many people are coming and how much money we're going to make. So to the extent possible, you know, we're going to be using a lot of the same stuff that we have, the same signs, um, trying to repurpose a lot of things. We also ask for your flexibility and patience. Again, we're just not sure. Um, and we're going to do the best we can to anticipate as much as we can. But uh, again, you know, we're going to have to go with the flow and just do what we need to do to get you know, get our kefi out. Hey, um, on that note, um, what are we going to do? Um, Maria, uh, along that point, just curious, would it be worthwhile to? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm, I'm sorry, um, David. I was just thinking along the lines of, would it be worthwhile to try to have somebody to track the metrics, how many cars are coming in in each hour, things like that, so that we can build a history of knowing what's our most popular hour? Um, things like that. Um, I believe the orders are date stamped so we can go back and review them. And we can also take an inventory of what's selling and what's not. Um, although I think Mary did a fabulous job <laughs> of anticipating 
you know, what we're going to sell and what the items were. Um, I wanted Greek fries. I just want to say that, but I understand the impracticality of <laughs> offering that. But um, next year. And Luca um, Mades too, next year. Maria, we no dumpsters. What are we going to do in the kitchen once we fill up our little dumpster? So, uh, the, gonna... so here's the plan with the garbage. I'm glad you asked that question because I didn't address it. Um, the dumpster that we currently use, um, so just remember one thing, um, most of the garbage that occurs during festival weekend is from people eating on site. Um, most of those containers take up a lot of room in the garbage barrels. So we don't have to worry about that this year because there's no you know, eating on, on the property site. They're, they're going home with their food. So most of the garbage that we're going to create is going to be during the prep week, okay? Um, so we're able to, you know, throw away the boxes, break them down, you know, throw away any garbage. Um, all of the food will be marinating, uh, such as the chicken and the souvlaki. Um, we have asked waste management to come Friday morning and empty that dumpster. In addition, um, we are going to be bringing from Dermeyer maybe 20 to 30 uh, trash barrels that are normally placed along the property during a, a regular festival. Those will be placed in that corral that's behind the dishwashing area, okay? So we can use that as, you know, kind of, you know, spillover, so to speak, or, um, you know, for some reason, you know, we do need extra, garbage and we can certainly take it to a dump if we need to. We have some hired help this year. Armando's going to be providing a lot of that assistance for us or you know, we just leave them there and then just have them dumped in a subsequent pickup. They're coming Monday too, right Ellen? They're, they're coming Friday and Monday. Friday and Monday morning. Um, right. I know that there's a lot of chick a lot of kitchen trash like green bean cans and Mm -hmm. all the plastic containers of lemon juice and all that mm -hmm. and the chicken boxes. Mm -hmm. I know that's gonna fill up that little one very quickly. So we're gonna need to think about where we put it so that it's not visible to the people driving around. Well, it's not gonna be visible because the dumpster has a door, as you know, the corral has a door. Um, so Mary, um, I just wanna ask you if you could address that. Um, you had anticipated that all of the items the packaging for the items used for the food, like salads, souvlakis, are going to be gone by Friday morning, correct? Well, we may still have boxes of the packaging, but m most of the stuff should be gone by Friday morning. Okay. Um, you know, if, for example, we're going to use um, the clamshell containers we're going to use to pack pastries, we're going to do that before um, the festival starts. We're going to, um, the grossest thing that we have for trash is, um, the chicken boxes mm -hmm. and, you know, those can be, um, like you said, we'll be, have some of the chicken marinating and what's not marinating, um, we can pull and, um, I mean, we may just have a few boxes. I mean, you're just going to have to deal with it and you mm -hmm. put them in a separate trash bag, but trash bag and move them out. Um, and then all the pans that we have, we're not gonna be washing the aluminum foil pans. Those are gonna be used and pitched. And we'll mm -hmm. just stack them up and then throw them away all at one time. And Mary, did we also speak about um, the cans and plastic things that we could rinse them and we could just put them aside for recycling that we wouldn't necessarily be in the trash? Yes, we can rinse the cans, we can rinse plastic, um, but the, and the, the pans, the aluminum foil pans, they could be recycled if somebody wants to wash them out, um, but we're not gonna have somebody specifically there to wash, you know, 300 pans or whatever. Um, I see a question about bathrooms being available. Um, yeah, our normal bathrooms will be available. Um, you know, they'll be cleaned on a regular basis. So um, the dancers and the people that are working downstairs, volunteers, finance, they can use the lower bathrooms um, and the upper bathrooms are available as well. Well, I kind of meant like for customers, like if they ask, oh, I, my child needs to go to the bathroom. Uh, well, sure. I, 
Park in number eight and <laughs> come on there over. You go. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Yeah, hopefully that's rare. Okay. Hopefully that's rare. Hey, uh, Mary. Uh, pamper. <laughs> Mary, um, this probably is a good time to put a sign over that sink that's right beside the dishwasher because uh, th that says this is no this no longer is a garbage disposal because I don't think too many people know that and I would hate to have that thing clog up in the middle of the festival. Okay. Good idea. I'll make a I mean, note. I don't, it was a garbage disposal and we used to throw food down there all the time. And I think most people still still know think that, even though that's not the case due to yeah, but, current. Right. And we haven't had that for about maybe 12 Five years. years. Yeah, a long time. It, it went away with the renovation of the, of the kitchen uh, for the new addition. Right. Well, that wasn't 12 years ago. <laughs> it's been a long time since we had it. Five years. Seven. Okay, seven. I don't know. <laughs> It seems like forever to me. Yeah. Um, one thing I do want to mention, um, while we're taking things out of Dermeyer, um, we want to ask all of the ministry heads to take a look at what's remaining in there and see if there's anything that can be tossed. And so um, we're going to start that this week, but um, I'll send out a note about that as well. Uh, because we do want to clean that out and make it a little bit more accessible. It's very hard to move around in there. Um, One thing I, that might uh, expedite that, Maria, is if we um, can take pictures of everything that's in there, you know, or like a wall or whatever, and address that, you know, so that not, everybody doesn't have to go down there. They can see a picture of, oh, uh, Philopticos has, you know, 47 bins of Christmas decorations or I don't know what. I mean, I'm just, whatever. Mm -hmm. can yeah, we can certainly do that. But just remember too, a lot of those bins are not labeled. You know, I know. Yes, yeah, so every one of these have to be opened up and, and looked at. So. Maria, is that building still in good shape? I mean, is it sound? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, actually I was in there yesterday, right when the storm broke. I don't know if you, if you saw that the, the the thunderstorm that we got, I mean, it was right overhead. So I was literally stuck in there. <laughs> I was like, oh, what do I do now? So I found, I felt like I was camping. I found two fans, plugged them in, <laughs> had the doors wide open. And uh, I was looking particularly at the roof. There were absolutely no leaks. It's very um, cobwebby and dusty. Yeah. Um, and that's something we should clean up. But um, that's why I want to kind of get as much out of there as possible so we can clean it up and just, I would love to walk in there and, oh, you know, this is where full up to us stuff is. And this is where the festival stuff is. And, you know, kind of put it in a, a logical order. And I welcome anybody who's got that engineering brain to come and help do that. Sorry, electrical. <laughs> <laughs> Need to find a mechanical. Okay. Any other questions? You guys have been great. Thank you so much. And uh, if you think of something though, let us know, um, you know, shoot it to um, any one of us or me and I'll get, you know, your questions answered. But, um, you know, certainly, you know, it's going to be um, kind of fluid. It's going to be, you know, a project in motion and uh, we may change our minds about certain things and, you know, that's fine. You know, um, the object is to get us together and, you know, hopefully show our community a good time and also help support, you know, our building fund and our charities. We're going to be supporting Full Up to Hus this year um, and their social services. So um, hopefully we can make them a good chunk of change as well. Okay. Um, so Father, do you want to finish uh, with any thoughts? Uh, just the prayer and thank okay. you all for, uh, for doing this and trying so hard. <laughs> May God bless you and keep you in protection. Christos ανέστη εκ νεκρών θανάτων θανάτων πατήσας και της θυσμής μας η ζωή περισσάμενος. God bless you. Thank Have you, a wonderful Father. day. And, uh, Thank you, everybody. Happy Mother's Day th this weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for putting uh, this together, will... Maria. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. Thank you, Maria. 
Okay. And Peter, we missed your margarita. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I made a, I made a personal year. stash, so. Uh. <laughs>